Good evening and welcome. We're gathered to celebrate the Mass of the Lord's Supper. Would you please rise and join in our opening hymn at that first Eucharist, which will be projected. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Brothers and sisters, this morning at the Cathedral of the Blessed Sacrament, the Archbishop blessed the oils that we will be using this year for our sacraments, the oil of the sick, the oil of the catechumens, and the sacred chrism. And at this time, we'll be presenting those and receiving those in our church. The oil of the sick. May the sick who are anointed with this oil experience the compassion of Christ and his saving love in body and soul. The oil of catechumens. 
Through anointing with this oil, may our catechumens, who are preparing to receive the saving waters of baptism, be strengthened by Christ to resist the power of Satan and reject evil in all its forms. Blessed be God forever. The sacred chrism. Through anointing with this perfumed chrism, may children and adults who are baptized and confirmed and priests who are ordained experience the gracious gift of the Holy Spirit. Together, let us give glory to God. O God, who have called us to participate in this most sacred supper, in which your only begotten Son went about to hand himself over to death, entrusted to the Church a sacrifice new for all eternity, the banquet of his love. Grant, we pray, that we may draw from so great a mystery the fullness of charity and of life, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall stand at the head of your calendar. You shall reckon it the first month of the year. Tell the whole community of Israel, On the tenth of this month, every one of your families must procure for itself a lamb, one apiece for each household. If a family is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join the nearest household in procuring one and shall share in the lamb in proportion to the number of persons who partake of it. The lamb must be a year old male and without blemish. You may take it from either the sheep or the goats. 
you shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. And then, with the whole assembly of Israel present, it shall be slaughtered during the evening twilight. They shall take some of its blood and apply it to the two doorposts and the lintel of every home in which they partake of the lamb. That same night, they shall eat its roasted flesh with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. This is how you are to eat it. With your loins girt, sandals on your feet, and your staff in hand, you shall eat like those who are in flight. It is the Passover of the Lord. For on this same night, I will go through Egypt striking down every firstborn of the land, both man and beast, and executing judgment on all the gods of Egypt, I, the Lord. But the blood will mark the houses where you are. Seeing the blood, I will pass over you. Thus, when I strike the land of Egypt, no destructive blow will come upon you. This day shall be a memorial feast for you, which all your generations shall celebrate with pilgrimage to the Lord as a perpetual institution. The word of the Lord. with 
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord. commandments says the Lord love one another as I have loved you the Lord be with you a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Before the feast of Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. He loved his own who were in the world, and he loved them to the end. The devil had already induced Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot, to hand him over. So during supper, fully aware that the Father had put everything into his power and that he had come from God, and was returning to God, he rose from supper and took off his outer garments. He took a towel and tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with the towel around his waist. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Master, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing, you do not understand now, but you will understand later. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, Unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. Simon Peter said to him, Master, then not only my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus said to him, Whoever has bathed has no need except to have his feet washed, for he is clean all over. So you are clean, but not all. For he knew who would betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. So when he had washed their feet, he put his garments back on and reclined at table again. He said to them, Do you realize what I have done for you? You call me teacher and master, and rightly so, for indeed I am. If I, therefore, the master and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow so that, as I have done for you, you should also do. 
The Gospel of the Lord. Good evening. I'm truly humbled uh, to be presiding over Holy Thursday Mass this evening. As a kid, I went to this Mass many, many years, and here I am presiding at it. And so I thank God for the gift of my priesthood and the gift of all of you, our parish, seeing you all in front of me, beautiful, one family of faith. I'd like to begin my preaching this evening with a quote from Pope Benedict, which Ben will display on the screen for us, hopefully. Oh, good. And Pope Benedict writes, Jesus represents the whole of his saving ministry in one symbolic act. He divests himself of his divine splendor. He, as it were, kneels down before us, he washes and dries our soiled feet in order to make us fit to sit at table for God's wedding feast. And I think that quote very beautifully illustrates the three themes for our Mass this evening. The Eucharist, the priesthood, and foot washing. The Last Supper throughout history has always been displayed in different forms of art. And I'll be honest, many of the Last Supper renditions I see, I don't think do justice to the meal that took place that evening. Until I saw this video from the National Gallery describing a restoration piece of a 17th century French artist, Poussin. You'll see his rendition of the Last Supper on the screen. And in Poussin's rendition of the Eucharist, he shows the disciples reclined at supper, as we heard in the Gospel text. And this is what we celebrate tonight. But before that took place, Jesus did something pretty remarkable. He washed feet. Now, in the time of Jesus, everyone walked everywhere. And you'll see in the next slide, kind of a similar example of what a sandal would have looked like in Jesus' day. Right? Not the newest model. And actually, sandals got dirty pretty quickly because people walked for miles and miles a day. And it was customary that when you returned home, the servant or slave of the household would wash your feet. And so what happens in the gospel today from John is that Jesus does the remarkable because he's in this house with his 12 disciples and there's no servant in the house. In fact, this was so common to have your feet washed that near every front door there was a basin and a pitcher of water. And so I'm sure the disciples that evening hour are thinking to themselves, all right, who's going to do it? And Jesus takes the first step and he takes out his outer garment, wraps a towel around his waist, gets on his knees and washes the disciples' feet. Now Peter is scandalized by what Jesus does. Peter is not scandalized by the foot washing because he was used to that. But what shocks Peter is the guy who did it, his master and Lord. And if you think about it, feet are interesting, aren't they? They're disgusting. <laughs> Let's be honest, right? They get dirty and smelly pretty quickly. And we don't show off our feet only in the summer. We keep our toes hidden the rest of the year. 
and they didn't have Dr. Scholl spray for your shoes back then. There were no manis and petties back then. And so feet stunk. In a way, feet represent what is shameful and disgusting about ourselves. Or you can say what is most vulnerable about ourselves. And there they are exposed to Jesus, and he's holding them. He goes down to a very low place. Now, the first time that I ever had my feet washed was at the seminary. The first year seminarians always had their feet washed, and four months senior had to wash my feet. I don't know if you remember Monsignor, but it probably stank. <laughs> and I took a shower three times that day, and right before I went down into the chapel, I took my bottle of Axe and shh! <laughs> we don't have any tonight. But there he is, the Son of God, beholding our, the most shameful parts of ourselves, and he says to us, I don't find you shameful or disgusting. I find you precious and valuable. So much so that I will take the place of the slave. Wow. Wow. And then he tells us that we have to follow this commandment by washing one another's feet. Now, as I was preparing for priestly ordination three years ago, priests always have their ordination card made up to give away. And I prayed really hard on what image to use, and I want to tell you a little story. Actually, I thank God for my sister for this story. Because in the next slide, you'll see that my sister is a PA, and she went to school in Williamsburg, Kentucky at the University of the Cumberlands. It's not a Catholic school, but it's a Christian denomination school. And when I went to the University of the Cumberlands for my sister's white coat ceremony, I beheld the following statue on the campus, which is the statue of the divine servant. And it's a statue that shows Jesus washing the feet of Peter. And at that time, I was in the seminary. At that time, I had my doubts and questions if I was going to make it. And I prayed with that statue for a long time, and I said to myself, if I become a priest and I make it, that's the image I want on my ordination card. Because that is what the priesthood is about. Getting down on your knees, going to the lowest place, to serve, just like the divine servant. And so that became the image on my ordination card. And I chose that passage from the gospel we heard today. Pope Francis writes the following words in 2015. And today I will wash the feet of 12 of you, but all of you are in these brothers and sisters, all of you, everyone. Everyone who lives here. You represent them. But I need to be washed by the Lord, and for this you pray during the Mass, that the Lord also wash away my impurities, that I may become a better slave at the service of people, to become a better servant to you, as Jesus was. And that's my prayer for myself. That's my prayer for Monsignor and Father Anthony, that we become slaves for you, servants. Tonight is a very special night. Tonight reminds us that God will go very low to get our attention. Because we think we have to go higher and higher and higher for God to be pleased with us 
But actually, over the next three days, God is going to go lower and lower and lower because he will wash feet. Then he will go even lower to the cross and even lower to the tomb and even lower to Sheol. But none of those destroy him or overpower him. Tonight, God wants to remind you and me that there is nothing about us that he finds disgusting or shameful, that he holds each of us in his hands. And as we receive him this Last Supper, we get to hold him in our hands and put him on our tongue. As I was praying about how to close the homily, I went back and looked at this book called Awesome Glory by Jeremy Driscoll. I think he spoke here a few years ago, didn't he? Yes, I knew he did. I don't know why I asked it, but <laughs> he did. His picture's downstairs somewhere. And Abbot Driscoll summarizes my words way better than me. And I'd like to close with this. Because my prayer is that I would be a better servant for you. That we would all come to understand the fullness and the depth of that wondrous love of God that we sing about. That we will encounter over the next two days. I hate reading stuff to people. I promise I will close with this. Driscoll writes the following about what will take place in just a moment as 12 of those in our Becoming Catholic program will have their feet washed. There is always a bit of commotion involved, usually some difficulty in getting it all done smoothly. Hear that, altar servers? In fact, it is not meant to be easily done. The priest is down on the floor and the community feels some shock in seeing him in this position. Those having their feet washed perhaps feel some embarrassment, some hesitation. Perhaps some who are watching from the congregation must struggle to check thoughts in themselves that they are not pleased to see the feet washed of someone known by them to be a not entirely upright person. Such shock and embarrassment and discomfort are a blessing for the community, a revelation. The action renders vivid what must always be a major dimension of the priestly ministry in the community, namely, that the priest is an icon of Christ at the head of the community. But precisely as head, he is present as one who serves. He does not hesitate to wash the feet of the members of his flock, even the feet of one who shortly after may betray him. The washing of the feet is a symbolic action, of course, but the enactment of this unsettling ritual in the midst of a particular community is always a renewal for that community of the grace of the priestly ministry and the bonds of love that is meant to build among all members of the community. What Jesus did symbolically in the washing of the feet, he does the next day in very fact by laying down his life for his sheep. What the priest does symbolically, he must also do in very fact in his service of the community. Every day he is meant to lay down his life for his sheep. And if the teacher and master does this, so ought we all to do. I have given you a model to follow, says Jesus, so that as I have done for you, you should also do. What wondrous love is this.
feet and said to them, Do you know what I, your Lord and Master, have done for you? I have given you an example that you should to Simon Peter, and Peter said to him, Lord, are you to wash my feet? Jesus said to him in answer, If I do not wash your feet, What I am doing, you do not know for now, but later you will come to know. Yeah. 
Together now let us profess our faith. Oh, I'm sorry, at this time we will now present our petitions before our loving Father. For the church on earth, that we may be guided to a greater understanding of the perfect love and service of Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For those in positions of power and influence in the world, that they may understand something of the spirit of Christ's sacrifice, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For those confronted by temptation, that they may be strengthened by Christ's example of loyalty to his Father. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For all of us in this community, that more and more we may reflect in our lives the Eucharistic love of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For the dead, that the sacrifice of the Eucharist may bring them to eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Good and gracious Father, we thank you for the outpouring of your love, especially tonight as we commemorate the Passover sacrifice in the flesh, your body and blood given for us. Increase our faith and our trust in you, Lord, and we surrender to you all of the prayers that lie in the silence of our heart, confident that you will answer them, who are Lord forever and ever.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the all of this holy church. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of the sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest, who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Alan, our Bishop, his assistant bishops, and all those who holding to the truth hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and praying and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those yes. whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Cursaginus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints, as we ask that through 
their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your prote protecting help through Christ our Lord. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you as we observe the day on which our Lord Jesus Christ handed on the mysteries of his body and blood for his disciples to celebrate, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, for our salvation and the salvation of all that is today, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Or tempt to annunciamus Domine. Et tu am resurrectionem Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel, the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints, Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. 
Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. On news day, Queen Tony's back on Hamundi. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. This is the body that will be given up for you. This is the chalice of the new covenant in my blood, says the Lord. Do this whenever you receive it in memory of me. This is the body that will be given up for you. This is the chalice of the new covenant in my heart, says the Lord. Do this 
Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that just as we are renewed by the supper of your Son in this present age, so we may enjoy his banquet for all eternity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Yes. 